Good evening and welcome to DCU TV News. I'm Ani Connolly and today we'll be looking at the top stories that have taken place across the university over the last two weeks. We'll also be looking at national news stories that directly affect DCU students. Our first story this evening looks at the increase in taxi fares. Commuters will see a 3% rise in the coming months. A 10 euro journey will now cost 10.50. Michal Oskanal and Ian Mangan spoke to some regular taxi users about the announcement. This week, increased tax fares proposed by the National Transport Authority were brought into effect. The changes which were proposed back in September will see taxi fares rise by 3.2% and are the first increase since the last pay rise in 2015. The increase will see commuters pay a slightly larger fee than usual, with a 10 euro journey now costing around 10 euro 50 and a 30 euro journey now costing 31 euro. Although the rise may not be substantial, there are some everyday taxi customers who feel the rise may not be necessary. Uh, well, I get taxis all the time from here, right? So the rise in fare, well, it shouldn't really be added on, should it really? Because, I mean, to get enough as it is, what is it for something before I even pull off? So, I mean, putting the extra on it then, that means there's more money going on top of that again. Head of Public Affairs for the National Transport Authority, Don Logara, said that the measures were put in place to alleviate dwindling taxi driver profit margins. But how will the changes really affect business? But, um, it affects me that, um, and all taxi drivers, it costs you to go to 200 euro to have all the alterations done to your meter. And, you know, it takes you a long time to claw that back before you see any actual increase in your earnings, you know. While taxi drivers will lose money initially, the aim is to increase their profits in the long run. However, some drivers fear the increase will discourage customers from using their service. Michal Oskanal, DCU TV News. The number of Irish students studying in the UK has been decreasing for a number of years. The fall off almost doubled last year to 11%. Shauna Cohen and Megan Conway report. The business building in DCU, a place where many leaving their students will hope to end up next year. However, as students fill out their CAOs, UCAS have announced that the numbers of Irish students accepting places in UK universities has fallen by 11%. The fall off doubled from last year and is being linked to concerns over an increase in fees after Brexit. Irish guidance counsellors were cautious about advising students to study in the UK when the future of fees is unclear. There is a fear, I suppose, of the uncertainty. Economically and politically, students aren't quite sure what's going to happen in terms of the situation around fees, even the cost of living, and there are so many variables going with that. So it's, it's making students take stock. The advice that we would give as guidance counsellors would be to you know, do your sums, do your maths, sit down with your parents and work out the logistics and the, you know, can you, the affordability, can you afford to, to live? Um, and if the situation around fees, wherever you're going changes, can you, can you actually fund those fees going forward? English universities currently receive the highest number of Irish students opting to study abroad. However, this dropped by 22% last year to just over 900. There's also fears over how Brexit will affect the free fee scheme in Scotland and how this effect will impact the Irish students currently availing of them. So it's hard, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen with the situation around Scotland. That could change. We, don't, we just don't know what's going to happen. It's an unknown world at the moment. Megan Conway, DCU TV News. More than 100 cyclists are injured in collisions each year. Our reporters Colin Brady and Rachel Martin spoke to students to see if they felt safe cycling to and from college. More than 100 cyclists on Irish roads are injured in collisions each year, according to recent data from the Road Safety Authority. Cities and towns are most dangerous for cyclists, with the majority of all accidents occurring in built-up areas. Students are encouraged to cycle to college through initiatives such as Cycle to Campus Scheme and the DCU Intercampus Bike Scheme. However, many cyclists feel unsafe travelling to college on bikes. At the moment when I'm cycling, I'll be behind a bus, that bus is probably going to pull out. Um, I could either try and overtake it, which is dangerous, or I can stay behind it and get a big face full of uh, fumes, which isn't, isn't that pleasant. So I think if we could have a situation where there was just more of a kind of clearly demarcated space for cyclists and one for buses, that would be better. DCU also hold weekly bike clinics where students can come and get their bike serviced free of charge. We spoke to Samantha Fahi about what can be done to improve matters and encourage students to cycle to college. 
my ideal would be that we would have segregated cycle tracks so that they wouldn't have the opportunity for cars to pull in on top of them because you can see as you do any of the routes even just between our campuses that some of them the, the cars are parked inside in the cycle lane so it's really difficult for a cyclist because then they have to go out around the car then you're out and you're um, getting in the way of other motor vehicles coming up and down the road Rachel Martin DCTV News the Interfaith Centre were sharing the love and giving out free pancakes on Tuesday. Our reporters Katie Gallagher and Amy Murphy went to look for pancakes and asked students if they'll be giving up anything for Lent. As Shrove Tuesday comes to an end, those who will partake in the traditional fasting season of Lent will be preparing to go off their favourite foods and stop any bad habits. Over 1,000 pancakes were given out to DCU students today. <laughs> Pancake Tuesday has arrived in DCU and students have been receiving free pancakes all day at their Glasnevin campus at their Interfaith Centre. We asked students if they plan to participate in the fasting tradition this year and if so, what they'll be going off. Sure, yeah, this year, maybe chocolate, we'll see, we'll see how we're doing, yeah. <laughs> see how the exams go tomorrow, <laughs> see how we're feeling, yeah. Uh, I'm, I know, I don't think I'm going to go off anything for lunch, um, I was thinking about it, but I Oh, okay. Um, I plan to give up bread for Lent because I really like pastries. So, and I'm trying to um, be more healthy in that sense. Yeah, so bread. <laughs> yes, I plan to do the Lent um, for 40 days. So, uh, because uh, I am a, a face, in face, and I think that can be good for me to, to be to become again on the on the base to after um, appreciate a lot to have some and some uh, some good, good things so I think that I am gonna I'm gonna prioritize one chaplet every morning but uh, I hope that I will uh, succeed it okay and for me uh, it will be something similar. Um, I'm Catholic, so I'm going to do the chaplet uh, maybe every morning, like Maxence. Um, I just try to stop smoking for being more healthy and close to the God. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing Lent. I mean, uh, I'm a chaplain, so it's kind of a, uh, one reason to do it. But um, I, I think it's an absolutely beautiful thing because, you know, one of the greatest, most revolutionary things you can do is take back control and abstain from something fast. It's absolutely countercultural, absolutely powerful, absolutely beautiful. It's good for your body, it's good for your mental well being, it's good for your soul. I'm giving up alcohol and maybe a little something else for 40 days. Katie Gallagher, reporting from DCU. The annual Bros of Tralee took place in the canteen on the Glass Nevin campus last Wednesday. Our reporter Zoe Ryan went to the event to get the behind the scenes look. Here tonight at DCU's annual event, the Bros at Chile in aid of Cancer Society. Earlier on, we were talking to Siobhan Taig of Student Union to ask her about her involvement in tonight's production. So Bros at Chile is back. It's kind of been a collaboration between societies, SU, DCU volunteer. Um, Bros at Chile is basically Rose of Chile with boys. So the kind of clue is in the name. Um, people from each society will be like dressing up as, as a lovely rose for the night and a uh, they will be accompanied by their escort and the best bro will win. We're going to go backstage now to talk to some of the judges and the contestants ahead of tonight's show. Tonight is about all about looking at high heels, seeing who walks the best, who looks the best and overall who is the bro truly. So Kiva McGowan and I have swapped clothes. This is actually the play suit that she wore today. This is her jacket. Uh, and this is the bow that she wore to Shite Night last night. It's, it's, it's for charity. Uh, we're representing MPS. Yeah. The winners. Oh, we're buzz. We're pure, pure buzz. So um, I'm uh, representing drama. Uh, I'm also on the SU bus, so I'm uh, representing drama today. DCU Rose of Tree 2018. Everything that we make tonight, everything you paint on the door, everything uh, that we make in the raffle is going straight to the Irish Cancer Society. The bros had a variety of interesting talents to keep us all entertained. And I'm going to be sort of like Libby Walsh, point out a few facts about you. You're definitely in an actress, you're definitely wearing a dress. Screwed 
Baseball Fair, Matorica August Makeshtina, a guy with liquid eyes. TV News at the Broses Trilly 2018. And finally to sports. DC have crashed out of the Sigerson Cup after a quarter final defeat at the hands of rivals UCD. A strong fight back at the end at the first half was not enough as UCD held on for a four point victory. Alex Dunn and Michelle Townsend report. DCU fell by four points to UCD in a tough Sigerson Cup quarter final in St Clair's on Tuesday. The home side fought back from a nightmare first 15 minutes, where UCD was led by 7 points, to be only 1 point behind the half time after a goal by Dermot Norton. A tenth second period saw UCD take charge thanks to the free kick taking of Conor McCarthy, and another slow start cost DCU their momentum. The final score read, UCD 16 points, DCU a goal and 9 points. Speaking after the game, DCU forward Dermot O'Connor said that the sides were evenly matched by the end, with UCD's clinical finishing ending up being the difference between the two teams, as well as DCU having too much of a gap to claw back. Go on, Dermot. It's another campaign over for Niall Moyna's men, while UCD will advance to next week's semi-finals. Alex Dunn, DCU TV News. That's all from the newsroom. Tune in again Wednesday week for more DCU TV news. Thank you.